I'm Lewis Moore and I'm a partner in Hill Dickinson shipping team here in London. I'm going to talk about a case with which I was involved which concerns piracy, contractual interpretation and surprisingly a hint of romance. This is a case about a ship that was captured by pirates on her way from the Black Sea to China and it's about whether or not hire had to be paid by the charterers to the ship owners during the period that the ship was captured. The ship was held by the pirates for about five months and the loss which the owners suffered exceeded five million dollars. So there was a lot of money involved in this case. The obligation of a charterer to pay hire under a charter party is virtually sacrosanct. Unless they can show a specific contractual exception, they have to pay their hire and the owners have got a claim to be paid in full. In this case, there were three clauses in the charter party which dealt with charterers not having to pay the hire. Exceptions clauses. There was a standard exceptions clause under the charter party which dealt with problems if the ship broke down, for example. And then there was a clause which said that charters would not have to pay hire if the vessel was captured, seized or arrested by any uh, authority or legal process. Now, in relation to this issue, the case went to an arbitration. And on that clause, the arbitrators said that the legal process only related to the arrest so that capture or seizure, as was provided for in the clause, or detention would be something for which the uh, charters would be excused. The case went from the arbitrators to the court and the court had to construe the charter party. And there are a lot of recent cases in the Supreme Court on how you construe documents. The rule essentially is what would a reasonable person with the background knowledge of the parties understand the parties to have meant with the language that they used in the contract. And the judge reminded himself of this and he said that the words by any legal process covered all the previous types of detention. So that it had to be a legal process uh, in order for the charterers to say that the vessel was off hire. So they failed on that point and the owners succeeded on one of the issues. The other issue related to a clause which said that if the vessel was captured by pirates um, that it would be off hire and it referred to the charter as having the right to route the vessel through the Gulf of Aden which is one of the most notorious areas for piracy. But it also provided that this came at a cost and it meant that the charters had to pay the extra insurance and crew bonuses that were being incurred as a result of going through a dangerous area. Now in fact the vessel was seized after she'd completed transit of what was generally regarded as the Gulf of Aden and was in the Arabian Sea. So the owners argued that this clause didn't apply because the vessel had to be seized in the Arabian Gulf and hadn't been. The arbitrators decided that as a fact there is no precise definition of the Gulf of Aden and the judge couldn't interfere with that. Findings of fact can't be looked at in an appeal, only questions of law. And that was somewhat fatal to the owner's case because they couldn't say where the Gulf of Aden was geographically so that they could then say that the ship was not in the Gulf of Aden. And furthermore the court decided that the ship didn't need to be in the Gulf of Aden in order to be captured but instead that it could be anywhere after transiting or before entering the Gulf of Aden. And when the judge was looking at the wording of the charter party he considered that uh, overall that the charters were off hire as a result of the specific clause. It was clause 101 in the charter party, which so far as the owners were concerned, would have to go into room 101 because they lost the case and were unable to recover their hire. 